Oh my gosh. Wow, wild. look at that. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you are joining us for the official NFL Mock Draft 2020 on Time 2 Football. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show, and we are being joined by a very, very special guest. If you're a Time to Football regular, you may know his name, Michael Watson. He first appeared in the Madden tournament, which he beat me and uh, cut my hair. So I- I'm going to give the floor to you. Just just introduce yourself to the people that aren't familiar with you. And uh, what, what are what are... What are three things that you like? My name is Michael Watson, and I am the Madden champion. Mm -hmm. I am the best barber in town. As you can see, Hassan's subscribers have greatly increased since his haircut. Coincidence? Probably not. I should get a share. We'll see. Um, Three things I like. I like the Green Bay Packers, I like the Wisconsin Badgers, and I like the Milwaukee Brewers, and that's it. What? No one else. What an introduction. That was phenomenal. I can't can't top that. We can't follow it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. But we're actually going to get into it now. So, this NFL mock draft is actually pretty fun what we've got planned. We've got a lot of surprises coming up because what we did is... We did a lot of research because when you read mock drafts online, all these people are just basing it off of like, okay, maybe like a couple people actually watch film on these players, you know, and then they just read off of like the rest of these mock drafts and come up with like their own educated guess. That's, that's not exactly what we did. We watched film on all these players, hundreds and thousands of hours on all these players to come up with the best educated mock draft in the world. I did 30 hours just in the last 24 hours. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's incredible because mock drafts are legit because whatever we say is going to happen. Um, but it's actually going to get a little messed up because we each created our own mock drafts. But here's the kicker. We are going to take turns going back and forth drafting as if we were the general manager of the team. So, for instance, if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, I have the number one pick and I pick Joe Burrow, maybe I pick Chase Young, I don't know. That's going to throw off maybe Mikey's draft, and he's like, oh, dude, I thought you were going to pick Joe Burrow number one overall. Now Chase Young's gone. Who are the Redskins going to pick? And we're just going to go back and forth. We're going to have a bunch of trades for you guys as well. So, Mikey, are you ready to get started? I sure am. Um, you going to start us off with the, the Bengals GM position, or shall I do the honors? Actually... I thought, let's go into it. We don't know whether we're going to have the even number picks or Uh-oh. the odd number of picks. Uh-oh. So we can do rock, paper, scissors to determine which one uh, the other person wants to pick, whoever the winner is. You want to do that? Let's do it. I am also a rock, paper, scissors champion. That's false. He's about to lose right now. You're about to watch. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, that's two out of three. Like you know. I said before. It's okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I figured that that would work. Easy as times one, two. That's fine. That's okay. Then you have to get the three. You're the winner. You get to choose. Do you want picks one, three, five, seven, all the odd numbers? Or do you want two, th- two, four, six? Uh, give me the odds. You want, get, you want to give the me odds? the odds, yes. Okay, you like to go... With the odds. I like to go against the odds with your number one overall pick if you're the Cincinnati Bengals. All righty. I need zero time to make this decision. Um, if I was the Bengals, um, I would draft Joe Burrow, hometown kid. Who doesn't like a hometown hero? We love I, him. We love him. I, I mean, I've been living in Atlanta my whole life, and it uh, seems like every time they can draft a hometown kid, they never do it. So, you know, if I'm the Bengals, I'm taking Joe Burrow. He has a swagger. Never thought I'd use that word. I always hated when analysts use it. So um, I feel like I have to use it. Um, he has a swagger about him. He is confident. Um, I mean, he did. The one question I have about him is his team uh, in Lu- Louisiana, they had so many top receivers. Um, he's going to go into Cincinnati with an A.J. Green who's – been beat up the last couple years and they really don't have anyone else um as like a strong number one option other than aj and he's beat up so it'll be interesting to see what joe burrow can bring to the Bengals. 
Now it's on to my turn, and for the number two overall pick, I had the Washington Redskins selecting Chase Young. Defensive end from Ohio State. This guy is a monster, monster, the best player in this NFL draft, and I think it's just without question that Ron Rivera is going to love someone like him who's going to be the defensive cornerstone who's better than apparently all the Bosa brothers coming into the draft. Uh with him being the best player in this NFL draft, I feel like the Washington Redskins, this is a no-brainer at this point. I 100% agree. Chase Young is the best player in this draft. He would have been the best player last draft and probably the last three drafts. He is just one of a kind. And when you have LeBron James endorsing you, you know you're legit. So uh, Redskins, they're getting lucky here uh, with the Bengals picking Burrow. And if they don't pick Chase Young, they should sell their franchise. That's wow! What a bold, bold statement. It's just a fact. They shouldn't change their name before they sell their franchise, too. Or both, probably. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right, on to my pick. Oh, hold on, my phone's ringing. Oh, that's oh, so respectful. The, hello. Oh, Chris Greer, GM for the Miami Dolphins. Oh my gosh! You oh. You would like my pick. Uh, that's going to cost you your fifth and probably a second-round pick. Oh, okay. what? All right, deal. Oh, we've got a trade. Trade alert. Uh, Chris Greer just called me. He has my number. Wow. He does. Um, he would like my third overall pick. And with the third overall pick, the Miami Dolphins will be selecting to a uh, tag a <laughs> Close, Close enough. enough. Close enough. Wow. What a monster pick. It just had to happen. You're looking at a Miami team that's playing hard. They really, I didn't think they were going to get one win last season, and they finished out the season pretty strong. They're playing hard for their coach. Um, Tua, I personally think, is the best quarterback in this class. And honestly, what I would love to see happen with this pick, it's pretty far fetched, but. Um, I would love to see the Patriots move up uh, and pick it could Tua. Uh, Saban and Belichick are really tight, and he's had a history of picking Alabama players. So I think, you know, I don't think it's too far fetched, but I don't think it's going to happen. But I would love to see that happen. Oh, what I had at the number three pick was actually the Panthers trading up oh, to wow. the Lions to select Isaiah Simmons wow. to be a, a replacement for. Uh, Luke Keekley, but yeah, well, that's gonna mess up my draft because at number four, I originally had the Chargers trading up over the Dolphins so that they wow. could select their guy and Justin Herbert over the Dolphins. Um, but now that's gonna go back originally to the Giants who have the number four overall pick. And with the number four overall pick, I'm gonna say that the Giants are actually going to select. Jedrick Wills, offensive tackle wow. from Alabama. So there's going to be a lot of uh, talk about, oh, should we select Isaiah Simmons? Because he's 6'4", incredibly fast for his size. But I think that Daniel Jones is an investment, and you want to protect him at all costs. Not only that, but Joe Judge, the new head coach for the New York Giants, has a lot of connections with Alabama, with Nick Saban. Nick Saban speaks highly of J Jedrick Wills, and I feel like that's going to be the guy for the New York Giants at number four. My problem with that pick, um, Jedrick didn't really play left tackle for Alabama. True. That's where my concern came in. Um, so for me, I mean, Jedrick wouldn't be my first option um, if I'm looking for a left tackle. Um, I do think he's able to play that position, but I think there's options that have shown that they can play that left tackle spot. And it was interesting, you were talking about um, the trade that you would have had in place um, at three and then four. Um, it'll be interesting to see with the virtual draft. Um, I think they're going to add on, um, my sources say, um, <laughs> that they're going to add on time to each pick. And I just think this will give teams more options to uh, explore different options and different trades. And I think this could be one of the craziest drafts, if not the craziest. I think there's going to be a ton of trades. All right. So from number three to number five, you had the Lions trading with the Dolphins, and now they're at number five. Yep. 
Um, the the Lions they they need a corner, and they can move down and get an extra asset by trading their number three pick. So they can get their guy uh, Jeff Okuda from Ohio State, <laughs> kind of give them that pick. lockdown corner. Um, and he he's legit. He is someone you can put on an island. You don't have to worry about um, putting a safety over the top. So, um, and especially after losing uh, their top corner from last year, they have to go Jeff Okuda. I mean, I don't see any other choice for them, and I think he's there at five. What's crazy is I actually had – I mentioned the trade um, with the Panthers at number three. The Lions fall down to seven. Ironically enough, it ended up being a good trade for the, the Lions because they snagged Jeff Okuda at number seven, yeah. which I think that's that's a steal, even at number five, you know. For sure. Um, but, yeah, that's a, that's a solid pick for the Detroit Lions. Uh, now – with the next pick at number six, we've got the Chargers. A lot of talk about offensive tackle, quarterback. They get their guy that they love for the future. Justin Herbert from Oregon is going to be the next quarterback of the Los Angeles Chargers. And their theory, what they would love is for Tyrod Taylor to start and Justin Herbert to sit and learn, which, by the way, that's that's a bogus theory, which we, we proved on time of football. That doesn't work. You're either good, you're either, you're either not good. Uh, but that's what NFL teams like to consider. That's what they do for quarterbacks, and I feel like that's what they're going to do. Justin Herbert may not start in week one, but I think he's going to be the future quarterback for the L.A. Chargers going to SoFi Stadium. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the Chargers would be licking their chops if Justin – was their quarterback for the future, and if they can get him at six. Um, I think, you know, Tua's obviously from Hawaii, so he kind of has that West Coast vibe. So I think their first choice would probably be Tua between the two. Um, but, I mean, Justin Herbert, he's no slouch. I mean, he's got an arm. All righty. So number seven, we have the Carolina Panthers. And this is a pick I'm excited about. I think it could go two ways, and I think the, these two players that I'm choosing between are the number two and number three players in this whole draft, and that would be Derek Brown and Isaiah Simmons. They are both freaks. They're great. Uh, monsters. You can only I mean, pick one, though. Um, I personally, I would take the home, hometown kid from uh, – the area that we are in in Gwinnett and take Derek Brown. Uh, I, I didn't see one person block him this year or last year or the year before that. So nothing's going to change in the NFL. He's going to, you know, get double teamed, triple teamed. And that just opens up uh, for other players and just absolutely crazy talented Derek Brown. Um, at number eight, I've got the Cardinals. <sighs> so this is interesting. Because I'm looking at the draft board right now, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, what teams want to – you mentioned Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons is still the best player available on this draft board Agreed. right now. I think at number eight, the Arizona Cardinals select Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle out of Iowa. I personally believe this is the best offensive tackle in the draft. Um, I had Jedrick Wills going to the Giants because of the ties with Alabama and Joe Judge. But I think – if Kyler Murray is the investment and is the building block around this whole offense, they're going to go with the offensive tackle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Tristan Wirfs, he's went to Iowa. Iowa breeds linemen, Big Ten, Iowa, Wisconsin. I mean, they, every year it seems like there's a first-round pick between either of those schools. But I like the experience. I like the background of the Big Ten, nasty football. He's, he's going to be perfect for Kyler Murray even though Kyler can basically escape any pocket. Uh, he's so elusive. So, um, But, I mean, you want you want a left tackle to have your quarterback protected in the pocket. So, I mean, Tristan Wirfs, I, I had them actually go in. Uh, Andrew Thomas. I love Andrew Thomas from gotcha. Georgia. Yeah, um, good player. So, so underrated. Oh, yeah. So underrated. Um, and and this, this class is so deep at offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. It's probably the deepest offensive tackle class I've seen in the last 10 years, probably. It's pretty deep, yeah. I mean, yeah. it is it is just stacked. I mean, you can get a, a first-round guy in every other draft and probably the second round this year. So Yeah. Um, but I, I love it. I, I think that's what the Cardinals need, and you can't go wrong there. Who do you got going at number nine? 
At number nine, I got the Jaguars taking Isaiah Simmons. Um, they'll, they'll be so lucky if he's there at nine. He's probably top three player in this draft overall. He's versatile. He can play safety. He can play linebacker. He can play outside linebacker. He can play edge. He can get after the quarterback. He can guard tight ends. He can cover running backs out of the backfield. So I think the Jaguars, you know, put him next to Miles Jack. I mean, that's a crazy duo right there at linebacker. Um, I had them originally going to Javon Kinlaw, but if Isaiah Simmons falls, there's no way they pass on him. There's yeah. just no way. We talked about uh, uh, that Jaguars defense. They did lose a lot of pieces, uh, like corners and, and linebackers and Clayus Campbell as well. Yannick Nagakwe is, is a question mark as well. So I originally had them going with Derek Brown, but if Derek Brown is gone and Isaiah Simmons is still available on the board, uh, pair him up with, like you said, Miles Jack with Josh Allen, their first-round pick from last year. Yeah. That's a good defense down in Jacksonville. Yeah, that's, that's solid. Kind of re- rebuilding it to what it was a couple of years ago. Obviously, they've lost some corners. I mean, they lost Ramsey. I think they lost A.J. Bouye to the Broncos, Bouye, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's that, they're going to take a hit there at corner. Um, yeah. But the thing is, there's not really any – star corners in this draft outside of Jeff Okuda. So I don't think that they would necessarily waste their ninth pick on another corner. Mm, gotcha. You know, it's a, it's a big need. They, they need one bad, but I agree with you. It's I, I've got a corner. The next corner going is, uh, um, we'll, we'll get to him. Oh yeah. I love that guy. He's so good. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to him. Uh, at number 10, the Cleveland Browns, I was debating whether or not they, they're going to trade back, Um, Because there are some teams that uh, definitely do need a wide receiver. And some teams have their set wide receiver, whether they love CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. I feel like the Browns are going to stay put at number 10, and they're going to select the next best offensive tackle in the NFL draft, and that is Andrew Thomas from Georgia. Uh, The reason for that is because they want to invest in Baker Mayfield. They feel like that the season that he had last year was just an outlier and they need some offensive line help give us some protection so that he can do what he did best uh, a couple years ago they signed jack conklin in free agency from the tennessee titans which is one of the more underrated free agent signings so if you have jack conklin at right tackle and then at left tackle you've got andrew thomas your two bookends right there those are two really good players they're going to protect baker mayfield yeah, I mean, you look at the receivers they have in Cleveland and tight end. Now they picked up Austin Hooper. Um, so, you, I mean, they, they need a left tackle to keep Baker upright so he can have more than 0.86 seconds in the pocket, uh, even though that is still enough time to get the ball to Odell Beckham. Um, so Andrew Thomas, they have, they have to go tackle. So um, they're going to have their choice, I think, between a couple of them. And I don't think they can go wrong with any of them. And Andrew Thomas, he he came into Georgia as a freshman, true freshman, in the SEC and started and never lost that job. And there were other tackles there that were just as good or they had the talent to be just as good. Uh, but, man, that guy just works. He's he's a quiet guy, but he, he just works so hard. And um, if you're starting, in the, like I said, in the SEC as a true freshman, you're legit. And he did that for three years. And – I saw him put people on their back, pancakes. So, I mean, I never saw Jake Fromm get sacked much and definitely not from his side if it happened. So, Andrew Thomas is the guy. Like it. Love it. So, now we get into the fun. Oh, my gosh. We get into the fun here. This is my favorite part of this draft. Um, I think this is where we see receivers start going. Pretty mm. pretty quick at eleven at eleven and it's crazy too because this there's so many elite receivers in this class and the fact that none of them I don't think will get drafted in the top ten unless someone makes a move and I think there's just other needs in this draft that's why they're not going in the top ten and like I said there very well could be some trades happening um, but I think I think the first one goes eleven and I think they go Jerry Judy I mean his <laughs> route running his speed I mean he's big fast. They they lose Robbie Anderson, so that offense needs some help, and they needed that quarterback. Um, so, and it's funny because last year we did this podcast, and I said Sam Darnold was the second or third best quarterback in that class, 
or maybe it was two years ago. I don't even remember now. Yeah. Um, but he's kind of just – I don't know if it's because he doesn't have options. I mean, you have Le'Veon Bell there to help you. But, I mean, other than Robbie Anderson, they really don't have anyone else, and they're still going to have one option after this draft, which is crazy unless they go back-to-back receiver picks. Um, but they, they have to go receiver. There's just no other option. They have to go receiver. See, here's the thing, though. I get what you're saying about they have to go with receiver because originally my pick for number 11 for the Jets was Mekhi Becton. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because you could say, well, do you go from taking the fourth best offensive line and uh, offensive lineman in that draft or do you go with the best wide receiver? I feel like they were going to go with the fourth best offensive lineman because Sam Darnold needs that protection. We saw that game against the Patriots where his QB rating was just horrendous. Uh, he needs protection up front, but then they also need receiver help, and I felt like they were going to trade up and later in the draft to, to grab T. Higgins. Uh, but Jerry Judy, number 11, not a bad pick at all for Sam Darnold. Yeah, and that's funny because I kind of had the roles reversed. I think the Jets could – I don't even think necessarily they have to trade up. Like I think like they could have an offensive tackle, maybe Josh Jones from Houston there available, which again he would be a definite first round pick if it wasn't for the other six grade A offensive tackles. I mean, I think they can still get that tackle late and they could very well trade back and get a or take a tackle out eleven and trade up and get a receiver it'll be interesting to see what they do yeah for sure but but i think we can both agree that that offense needs help and whether it's tackle or receiver that's they got to do something they definitely do jerry judy i actually had jerry judy go into the oakland raiders oh my gosh las vegas raiders whoa dude that's never thought i'd say that but if you got jerry judy oh man going to um to the jets I feel like the Raiders are going to select C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb, wide receiver one, Tyrell Williams, wide receiver two. Um, on top of that, you got Darren Waller at tight end. You've oh, get, yeah. You're getting Derek Carr some weapons. And I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, the Raiders aren't that invested in Derek Carr, or maybe we should move on. But I think Mike Mayock stays true to his word because um, he had Derek Carr rated as a first-round pick um, when he got drafted in 2014. Um, so I think they're going to keep Derek Carr – for uh, the quarterback position for now. They're going to give him some weapons, and I feel like C.D. Lamb is the next best option at wide receiver. I, I completely agree. I don't, I've don't. i seen some mock drafts where they have the Raiders moving up for a quarterback. Uh, I just don't see it. You sign Mariota, you're paying him a lot of money. You have a lot of money in car, and you know, they might not be an elite quarterback, um, but I think what the Raiders do, I think – if they make a move, it'll be next year, and I think it, it'll be for Trevor Lawrence. Mm. Um, but, I, I mean, I could see the Raiders. I mean, I think the Raiders have so many options in this draft. I think they could move up. Um, but if they, if they stay put at 12, they're going receiver. And uh, C.D. Lamb, that guy is – he can high point the ball. He's quick. He, great route runner. Um, and the Raiders need help on the outside at receiver. And C.D. Lamb will definitely help. Yeah, for sure. That's a great pick. That question. So, 49ers at 13. So, three receivers in a row I got going. And I got them going Henry Ruggs, who I personally think uh, could be the best receiver out of this group. Uh, And it's crazy to think that Judy and Ruggs at Alabama on the same team, they're both burners. And 49ers, they lose Emmanuel Sanders. So I think they, they need someone there to replace him. And other than um, George Kittle, I mean, they have Debo Samuel, who I think was a real nice surprise. I mean, I was really high on him coming in, but he had a far better year than I expected. So I think adding another weapon there is really all the 49ers are missing. That defense is top tier. Uh, they got Garoppolo. So giving him more options, it can only benefit 49ers. I like the option of having Henry Ruggs to replace Emmanuel Sanders at wide receiver. And given that the creative play calling of Kyle Shanahan made uh, Debo Samuel have a breakout season, Henry Ruggs, with someone that kind of speed, is going to do the same thing. It's going to benefit them. But I feel like that wide receiver core is already crowded as it is. And I'm not saying that it's 
elite by any means, but you can make the best out of what the because they in the third round last year they drafted Jalen Hurd, who unfortunately got hurt, and uh, he's coming back this year, so we don't know what he's going to be uh, bringing to the table. But uh, but I like the option of Henry Ruggs at, at number thirteen. At you know what's funny is like at number fourteen, I had the Buccaneers trading back with the Philadelphia Eagles so that the Eagles could select a wide receiver and the best wide receiver that I had available at that point was CD lamb. Uh, and I, I had them trading like a first round pick this year or first round pick next year. Like they wow. were, they really wanted to get uh, CD lamb when he fell in my mock draft, but with the Buccaneers at number 14, I don't know if the Eagles are going to trade up for a receiver at that point. They really need some receiver help. And there's two guys, Justin Jefferson and, uh, T. Higgins, that could be first round talents. So I'm going to say that they do it. I'm going to say that they're going to see three straight wide receivers, according to our mock draft, mm-hmm. get taken. They don't want the receivers to get taken anymore. So they trade up with the Buccaneers to number 14, and they select T. Higgins, the 6'4 receiver from Clemson. I love it, um, but I don't love it. Oh, explain. So Buccaneers, you you signed Tom Brady. Okay. You signed Tom Brady. Your receiver core is probably the best in the league between Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Um so I think we they have to go tackle. I think they they grab one of these top tackles and I think they hope that one of these guys fall to them and they have someone to protect Tom Brady cuz I mean Tom Brady's not the fastest. Um he is actually the slowest. Um, so you just want to give him more time. I mean, he's going to find Mike Evans. He's going to find OJ Howard. He's, you know, he's going to find people. He just has to have the time. So they, I think they have to go tackle. Yeah. And the best available according to our mock draft is, uh, Mackay Becton, yep. which at this point we would assume that he'd already be taken, but yep. uh, we... that, that's who I would, they would be drooling if Mackay Becton was there I... at 14. I and agree. I think he very well might be there at 14. And I just don't see how they're, they're going to pass them up. I just don't see it at all. I And, man, I, I, I get that. I really do. Tom Brady needs that offensive line help. But, dude, the the offer that the Eagles would give up to draft a wide receiver, a first-round talent um, this year, I mean, I, I think it's too good for Bruce Arians and company to, to give up at that point. I just feel like you have a first-round pick this year. You get, you know, trade back to uh, what was it, number 21, to the Eagles and then you get a first round pick if they offer that yeah. for next year I mean that's you know they're they're probably going to be thinking long term at that point but I mean Mekhi Becton would be a good pick as well I think the Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings are going to be very active in this draft I think they're going to try to I think they're both going to try to move up and make sure that one doesn't get in front of the other um, but I had I had the Vikings um, jump in in front of the Eagles um around 20 with the Jaguars so okay yeah I, I think I think the Vikings I think the Vikings jump the Eagles but they're both gonna go receiver so it'll be it'll be fun to see who gets there first we'll see um so 15 uh we have the Denver Broncos and um this one I I, I was kind of torn between I, I mean I feel like they need help at corner um that did sign AJ Bouye um but I feel like they still need help at receiver, and it just feels like this wide receiver yeah. position has just been up in the air for so long at Denver. They've had one guy, it feels like, for so long, and then, like, they never re-sign one. So, like, they all just go away, and they still have that one guy. So I think I think you pair up uh, Justin Jefferson. Ooh, five straight receivers. Five straight receivers. <laughs> I think you pair up Justin Jefferson from LSU. Um with the Broncos, I, I think they could very well go C.J. Henderson. I was very torn between the two, but if I was sitting there and Justin Jefferson was there on the board, um, I just like Jefferson more than uh, C.J. Henderson. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the corner class um, outside of Jeff Okuda, and the C.J. Henderson, he just doesn't do it for me. He just doesn't. And it's weird because Florida usually has like a good pipeline of corners. Um, but I, I'm just not that high on C.J. Henderson. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, when you're in school and you're taking a test and it says, or, or five straight answers are C, 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 C on a multiple choice test. And you're like, 
You have to that erase can, one of them. You have to erase one of them. It can't be right. So, like, five straight receivers, I feel like it was the same thing. But, I mean, it just makes so much sense with Cortland Sutton there. Who else do you have? Right. You know, no fan at tight end, but at receiver, you got no one else. So, Justin Jefferson. If Justin Jefferson goes to the Broncos at number 15, I feel like the Minnesota Vikings are going to lose it because I had them picking Justin Jefferson because he's built just like Stephon Diggs. And he's just a good younger replacement for Stephon Diggs. Pair him up with Adam Thielen. So, but I like that pick for the Denver Broncos for Justin Jefferson. At number sixteen, the Atlanta Falcons. I've got my favorite team at this point. Picking C.J. Henderson. Oh, my heart, Florida. <laughs> my heart. Hey, man. I I think he's a really good player at this point, and the, the second best corner um, behind Akuda. Um, originally in my mock draft um, at number 16, I have them picking Javon Kinlaw at defensive tackle because they need that interior help. But with Desmond Trufant gone and with our mock draft apparently being so messed up at this point that C.J. Henderson is uh, available at number 16, I'm going to go ahead and say that they draft him to pair him up with Isaiah Oliver at corner. Yeah, and I think if if this draft were to fall like how it's falling, their two options are Javon Ken Law and CJ Henderson. And I think with the signing of Dante Fowler, I think they go see they would go CJ Henderson. And I mean I'm rooting for the guy. I mean I I hope he comes in there and locks down that number one corner spot, put him on an island and see what he can do. Um I mean, they've had success with Brian Poole in the past. Uh, I mean he was a slot corner. Um but I mean CJ Henderson, he he could very well be that number one guy and the Falcons that they, they need a corner bad. They, oh, they really do. I think that when you they, got, they've got to get a corner. Man, when you've got Tom Brady in the division now with Mike Evans and Chris yeah. Godwin, you need secondary help yeah, so and bad. Teddy and Drew also. Exactly. I mean, you, you have Michael Thomas in the league. You have Mike Evans. I mean, DJ Moore. you got to have someone to cover those guys. And I don't even know who their number one option would be right now if they didn't draft a corner. So, And, and it's funny you said that because I actually had, um, I had the Patriots moving up. Ooh. I had the Patriots moving up, um, and I, I mean I've been reading reports. I, I know the Patriots are in love with Jordan Love, apparently, and it could just be because his last name is Love. Um, and I, I think they, with Tom Brady departing, I think Bill Belichick is wanting to win so badly, and I think Jordan Love gives them that best option if they don't move up before then. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry World, can't stand them, don't like them. Dez did not catch the ball. He caught it. He did not. He definitely caught it. And I wish the Packers would sign Dez Bryant really badly. Dez, if you see now? this message, he's a Time to Football subscriber. Oh, nice. Um, What's up, Dez? You caught it. Dez, we need you in Green Bay. So I think Cowboys they have to they need someone that can get after the quarterback, mm-hmm. and I think probably the best guy, I mean you, Ken Law is still on the board. Ken Law is yes. still on the board. He still is. I would probably take him, but um, I felt confident with this pick. Uh, I have them going Clavon Chasen from LSU, and <laughs> I don't love Clavon. I think he has a a build similar to Leonard Floyd and which is just kind of, I don't think he's strong enough. It's a good comparison. I also don't think he's had enough time on the field. Mm. I don't think he's played enough at LSU to really get a good read on him. I guess their hope is for him to be that 10 sack guy, 10 plus. Um, So they, they they have to get someone and uh, Javon is available. Ken Law is available. Uh, but I don't think he's going to get after the quarterback necessarily as much as uh, Clay Vaughn would. So, I mean, Ken Law is a great defensive stop, stopper, so um, I don't see him falling this far, but I think Cowboys go Clay Vaughn. What's funny is finally after this effed up mock draft where we just go back and forth between screwing it up. picks and screwing it up because we're not on the same page. Finally, we have landed a pick where we both agree. Oh, really? This is yes. He was chosen on on uh, on my mock draft. Cowboys going at number seventeen because they lost Robert Quinn. Yep. So you need some help 
opposite of Demarcus Lawrence. And Demarcus Lawrence also with contract disputes and everything like that is a question mark for the future. So they needed to select the best edge rusher at that point. I feel like that he's he's the next best option for them. The Dolphins, they had this number 18 pick from Pittsburgh. I had McKinney going to the Dolphins. But at this point, if the best player available on this board is a guy that maybe we, we forgot about in the last few picks, but he's still up there, Mekhi Becton. Well, if he's available at number 18, they're going to do backflips in that war room because the Dolphins need some offensive line help. You draft your quarterback of the future and Tua Tagovailoa. You draft Mekhi Becton to be an offensive tackle to block for him. That's a win-win at that point. And on top of that, they have another first-round pick later in the draft. Right. And especially with uh, them signing Jordan Howard, who I know you love, um, and who I end up picking every year in fantasy, and teams just don't give them the ball for whatever reason. Um, I think I think tackle would be great. And if Beckton was there, I I would probably um, say that he can probably do a backflip himself. He probably um, could, yeah. I think that would be really – especially with two of his health scares, I think uh, – giving him a premier left tackle is golden it's huge yeah i mean i i I had them going deandre swift who okay i absolutely love i love swift georgia boy tua likes to do check down so i think deandre swift would be an option there i don't think jordan howard's the one you want coming out of the backfield on third down um but i love the i love the offensive tackle i love back in there i think that's a good pick you think uh check downs are either to running backs or the tight ends tight ends like Mike Gusecki. Hassan has said Mike Gusecki is the Tony Gonzalez of this era. <laughs> and I think he had maybe like 10 catches prior to last year. Oh my and gosh. He finally broke 22. through midway. It was 22 catches in his rookie season. And then, and then he had, he had a good second half this season. He's finally on people's radar. He's freaking, he's better than any tight end in that class. Better than Hayden Hurst. Better than Dallas Goddard, Mike Gusecki. Watch out for him in 2020. Number 19, Las Vegas Raiders. Still doesn't seem right. Doesn't. Like, it doesn't roll off the tongue. You cannot take the Raiders out of Oakland. Raiders need to stay in Oakland, and the Chargers need to go back to San Diego. That's just how it is. Wow. Javon Kinlaw is still on the board. They need help at corner. Mm. But I cannot sit here and consider myself an honest man if Javon Kinlaw is falling into the 20s. So the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, will be selecting Javon Kinlaw at number 19. Good pick. He single-handedly upset Georgia last year Mm -hmm. by himself. I don't think I've seen a more dominant performance all of last year than Javon Kinlaw in that game against the Georgia Bulldogs. Just that they kept trying to run it at him, and he blew it up every single play. And Georgia offensive line, like we've said, I mean they're like a Great Wall of China. I mean they're just massive men, and he absolutely dominated every single one of them. Like you said, Kinlaw, if he's available. You, you take the best player that you need at that point, and, and they could use the interior help. Uh, so I like that pick a lot. Um, at number 20, the Jaguars have this pick from the Rams um, when the whole Jalen Ramsey trade. If they need cornerback help, they've already, um, earlier, according to our mock draft, let me see, who do we select at number nine? Isaiah Simmons? Yeah, that's who we got yeah. at linebacker. They're going to continue building on that defense. If they need quarterback help after they lost A.J. Bouye to the Denver Broncos and after Jalen Ramsey got traded to the Rams, they're going to replace that with the next best available corner. And I feel like it's Trevon Diggs at that point uh, from Alabama. Uh, he, he's he's just a stud. He's, he could be a lockdown corner. Um, obviously not as good as someone like Jeff Akuda, but there's, there's a big gap, I feel like, in corner at that point is Akuda, And then... You know, maybe everybody else, but he's still a first-round talent. I feel like uh, so. Trevon Diggs, the uh, brother for Stephon Diggs, is going to be the next member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. What I like about Trayvon, I think he has a ton of upside, ton of potential. 
uh, he went into Alabama as a wide receiver and switched to corner. And not a lot of people can do that. I know Georgia tried that with Michael Hardman, came in as a receiver. They tried him there at corner his freshman year, and what a mistake that was. I mean, he's you see him what he's doing with the Kansas City Chiefs. They've yeah. breaking off a 60-yard touchdown almost every game. So I think Trayvon Diggs is, is a great pick, ton of upside, and, you know, can hopefully be that replacement for A.J. Bouye. Mm-hmm. All right, number 21, since Hassan decided to trade with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, I think Tampa Bay goes offensive tackle. I know we've talked about that, you know, Tom Brady needs help there. And someone who is climbing the boards of recent, who I never really saw much tape on him um, out of the 100,000 hours I watched. Yeah, uh, we legitimately watch 100,000 hours. It's true. We didn't read anything online. It's from watching film. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Ezra Cleveland. Ooh. He is climbing up the boards fast. Offensive tackle out of Boise State. Okay. Um, I, I don't know much about him. All I know is he's climbing up the boards, and I think he's probably the best available tackle. Um, I mean, there's a couple other guys there. You got Josh Jones from Houston. That was my pick. So, I mean, I think they're kind of – you know, you choose between the two, or even Austin Jackson from USC. A uh, bunch of tackles there, so I think you got to grab one, and I think they go Ezra Cleveland. I like that pick. I like it a lot. Like I said, I haven't heard a lot about him, but there's always that one player in mock drafts or in NFL drafts in general that teams will overreach for. But I don't want to say overreach as in like I'm discrediting Ezra Cleveland and the talent that he has but like compared to other draft boards out there for other teams he may not be the best offensive tackle available like i said josh jones was was my pick after uh they had that trade with the eagles um but yeah i agree offensive line is is a help that they need so the minnesota vikings at number 22 i have them picking aj epinesa the edge rusher from iowa they need some edge help to replace um, Everson, Gip- Everson Griffin, who is still available uh, for agent, and, and he's talked about returning to the Minnesota Vikings for less money. But I think at this point, he's he's a little bit of a steal. He's a little slow. His 40-yard dash time wasn't that good. Um, but he has a mid-round projection as far as talent goes, and I feel like if he drops to number 22, that'd be a good pick for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I think AJ, he does get – he's a little slow off the line, but – he is so good at using his hands, and um, I, I think A.J. down at 22 is a, a pretty good pick. Um, there's not a lot of edge rushers in this class, um, but I think A.J. is probably top top three, top four in this class, and a, every team needs someone that can get after the quarterback. No team will ever have enough of those guys. Here's the pick we've all been waiting for. Number 23, the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots, and I absolutely love this because I had them trading up for Jordan Love, and Jordan Love is still on the board on our mock draft, and I think it'll it'll give uh, some competition to Jared Stidham. Um, I think they're both kind of similar, honestly. Stidham uh, and Love, both kind of big guys who can throw the ball. Um, Some accuracy issues, obviously decision-making, but... Like I said before, when you have the best coach in the league, you can overcome those factors. And Jordan Love is, I think, I think that Jordan Love will be picked by the New England Patriots in this draft. Nice. I don't, I don't know exactly where it will happen, but I think they end up with Jordan Love. I think it's either them or the Packers with Jordan Love. I actually had the Patriots trading back uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs, so the Chiefs trade up to number twenty-three, um, and they're going to draft. Jonathan Taylor, uh, running back from Wisconsin. Oh, wow. I had them going to the Chiefs, um, him going there. So I love it. Yeah, you know, they need they need a, a running back to, to battle with Damian Williams at that point for the starting running back position. But, I mean, if the, if the Patriots stay at number 23, you know, then they stay at number 23. So, um, which, by the way, if, if the Patriots go to number 32 to draft a quarterback, I had them picking Jalen Hurts. Wow. I because I, I, I just go back to it doesn't matter about your talent or, or how far you can throw the ball. It's about your accuracy and decision making. And Jalen Hurts averaged 
like 70% completed passes in the last two years and didn't throw that many interceptions at all. Right. Um, there's also another guy similar that fits that mold, Jake Frum, that they could draft later in the second yeah. round or maybe even the third round if he's available. But Very similar to Tom Brady, Jake Fromm. Yeah. Very, very comparable guys, great leaders, not the greatest arm talent, but great decision making. And that, that's where I have the problem with uh, Jalen Hurts. Um, he doesn't have the vision downfield, and you could see that when he would play against decent defenses. He couldn't – you look at his completion percent overall, yes, it might be good. But that was his knock at Alabama. He was not an accurate quarterback, and you could tell when he played Georgia, when he played LSU, like his accuracy wasn't there um, against those good defenses. And it's really – the vision of the field. I think he's very intelligent. I think he's very smart. He knows offense as well. He knows where people are supposed to be placed, everything. But I don't think he can read defenses yet. I think that's his one knock, and I think that'll be his Achilles heel. Yeah, we will see what the Patriots decide to do at uh, at the number 23 pick. If they decide to trade up, trade down, whatever it is. Um, at number 24, the New Orleans Saints. Um, this is kind of a... Uh, a good pick for them that they got. They want to bolster that defense that's already pretty good as it is. Uh, but Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma, that's the uh, the pick that I've got the Saints going. They need a. Uh, um, I don't want to say they necessarily need a linebacker, but it wouldn't hurt. You know, you've got Demario Davis, you've got Kiko Alonso, but you, if you add in Kenneth Murray in that linebacking core, that's a good group right there. What I would do if I were the Saints, and this is someone who last year. As a sophomore, he was projected as like a top ten pick, and he's gone. He's fallen through the cracks this year, and I don't understand why. And that's Grant Delpit, safety okay. from LSU. He is yeah. dominant, and he played all. He's tough as nails. He played all of last year hurt, and maybe that's why you know he's fallen through the cracks. Maybe his numbers weren't good, or maybe he looked bad on film. Uh, but as a freshman, as a sophomore, I mean, he was projected to be a a first round pick and I'm not seeing many mock drafts with him even being picked. And I don't understand why he's big. He's physical. He's a ball hawk. Every, every team wants that safety. And I think if Del Pitt is there, I think the saints go Del Pitt. Mm, and especially like that. played it in Louisiana fan favorite, just go ahead and put him in new Orleans and he's going to shine. He's going to be, he's going to be a hall of famer. If not, Pro Bowler. I said that opposite. Pro Bowler, if not Hall of Fame. <laughs> we will see. Why? Uh, big, big words. So twenty-five Minnesota Vikings. They lose their corner. Mm-hmm. Xavier Rhodes. I think they go corner here. They could go offensive tackle. Maybe Josh Jones. Um, but someone I love, AJ Terrell, and he really got beat up for his performance in the national championship. He really didn't play that bad. The catches that those players were making over him were all phenomenal catches. They were all contested. So I think A.J. Terrell is so athletic, super athletic, uh, quick hips. He's quick. Uh, and I think A.J. Terrell, I think he could sneak up in this first round and really be a, uh, an asset to one of these teams. And I think yeah. the Vikings would love it for him to be there. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's uh... – that's a good pick. Corner is a big need um, in that division for sure after you lose Xavier Rhodes. Uh, after the year that Xavier Rhodes had, people were saying, oh, he, f- he fell off. And, and, and I'm, I, we, we have to find out for sure uh, this year what's, what happened to him if he's still a good corner. I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you where it's like, well, a lot of factors go into it, but it didn't look like he, he was uh, as good as he used to be. So AJ Terrell, it's a good, good replacement for him. After this uh, trade that they got from uh, from Houston uh, last year, with a 26 pick, I have the Miami Dolphins selecting DeAndre Swift, running back from Georgia, and uh, it's it's back and forth between um, him and Jonathan Taylor. I feel like Jonathan Taylor had a little bit more success in uh, in college, but I feel like DeAndre Swift it, it, it just makes a lot of sense, just the size that he has, the talent ability. If you have your new quarterback with the number five pick you have an offensive lineman that gets pretty much given to you in Makai Becton at number 18 and then you got a running back that can run behind that offensive lineman pair him up with Jordan Howard yeah 
that offense is looking good. I think I think the difference here between DeAndre Swift and Jonathan Taylor is Jonathan Taylor is pretty beaten up. I mean, in Wisconsin, you're running if you're the premier running back, you're running twenty to thirty times a game. Exactly. With DeAndre Swift, you have three bell cow running backs there with you at Georgia every year. And so I think he has less tear on his body. Um, he's probably better out of the in the passing game than Jonathan Taylor, even though Jonathan Taylor really improved last year in his passing game. But I think DeAndre Swift, he's less beat up. He he can cut. And, I mean, his. have you guys seen the video against Kentucky? Like, he just shred that defense. Oh, I watched that and, game live, yeah. I mean, it's just unreal, his cutting ability. It's 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 something special and i i really hope that he becomes the best running back in the league so number 27 seattle seahawks i'm gonna hit you with the stat that was mind-blowing when i found it go for it the seattle seahawks have traded their first round pick the last eight seasons the last eight wait they traded out of the first round they've moved in the first round they've well, moved yeah okay gotcha yeah so their their original pick they've traded eight times whether wow. that's moving down in the draft or moving up which I thought was unbelievable but I think this is the year that 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 breaks okay and I'm so excited about this pick I'm so excited about this pick because I think he's uh, one of the most underrated players in this class and his name is Zach Bond from the <laughs> University of Wisconsin wow he is you know Seattle they're Probably going to lose out on Clowney. I know he hasn't decided yet. Um, it's between them and uh, Tennessee. Um, so they, they need help bad at, at, at the edge position. And if anyone watched any of the Wisconsin games, this dude is everywhere. He's good in the run game. He can get after the quarterback. Super intelligent player. Very high IQ. He reminds me of TJ Watt. And I think teams thought, because TJ Watt originally went to Wisconsin as a tight end. And I think people thought TJ would didn't have enough experience and they didn't think he could pan out in the NFL against NFL tackles. He proved them wrong. He's one of the best rushers in the league. And Zach Bond, he's kind of similar. He really wasn't on the scene until his late years in Wisconsin. And I absolutely love him. And I think he's someone's going to get a steal on him, whether that's late first round or second round, shoot, maybe even third round. But I think... I think Zach Bond is one of the best pass rushers in this draft class. At number 28, I'm going to go with Patrick Queen, linebacker <laughs> LSU. I don't exactly know exactly who I had. Patrick Queen. Dude. The Ravens. We're on the same cycle. <laughs> so, Patrick Queen from LSU, um, they're thin at linebacker as it is. Um, besides Matthew Judon, of course, that they re signed. But I feel like this is going to be a good pick for the Ravens. They're really good at uh, picking defensive pieces. They traded for Calais Campbell to help their interior line. Now they got to look at the second tier um, and just keep on working on that front seven. So I feel like Patrick Queen, the next best available linebacker at that point, is going to be a Baltimore Raven. Yeah, and I think if there's a receiver that falls to them, I don't think there will be. I mean, there's still good receivers on the board. I mean, you look at... Uh, the kid from Arizona State, Brandon, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Ayuk. Ayuk, yeah, that sounds right. Or you have, um, what's his face from USC? You have Michael Pittman, Jalen Rigor. I mean, there's there's still some cats on the board that you can go at receiver, but I don't know if it, they're first round. Number 29, Tennessee Titans. I really struggled with this one. I didn't know exactly who to go for them. And... I think if they don't get Clowney, they have to go uh, Gross Matos from Penn State. Uh, if he's still there, I think that that's a good pick for it's them. It's a good pick, yeah. I like that pick a lot. Um, with him following to 29, that's uh, pretty much a no-brainer at that point. Uh, I originally had them getting Ross Blacklock, defensive lineman from uh, TCU. Um, you know, pair him up with Simmons on that line. But... Um, also, another option I was thinking about, Cole Komet, the tight end, tight end. from uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, You know, I could say that the Packers on number 30 are going to take Cole Komet. I'm going to choose LaVisca Chenault from Colorado. Yes. I love it. Okay, so before this draft, we were talking about uh, 
Devin Funchess, and you felt like he was a very underrated signing. And I think he is, and I, and I think he'd be a good number two and compliment for Devontae Adams. But um, I think a guy that can develop over the years and just get better and better and better, Chenault from Colorado, is a good pick. So I think the Packers are going to stay put at number 30. They're going to pick LaVisca Chenault. Um, but you think Jalen Rieger, but uh, we, we both agree that wide receiver is a need. Right, yeah, and I, w- I would love it if they got Chenault there at 30. Uh, I watched a couple Colorado games this past year, and, man, he you can just tell he's different on the field. He's just – it's crazy to think that there's more athletic guys than those guys that are playing Division One football. But he was faster than everyone. He was bigger than everyone. He's – I mean, the one thing I didn't see much of was just, like, him high point the football. But, I mean, you have Devontae Adams who's going to get – 15 touchdowns so you need someone on the opposite end and you need someone in the slot so i think they either go rieger or chenault i I would be happy with either one of those the 49ers who did we have them taken um before we had them taken we had a receiver right yeah henry ruggs henry ruggs oh boy so they probably go away from receiver and like you said they they need corner help so i think they go next of it next best available at corner and i think that guy's jalen johnson from utah i think that would be you either have jalen johnson or you have um the guy from tcu as well christian uh, uh or, jeff gladney okay jeff gladney, jeff gladney. Yeah, yeah yeah so i think i think they have to go corner and it's one of those two guys who can probably get, see the field and um hopefully get in on that first team defense i'm surprised that you said jalen johnson over uh christian fulton uh, from LSU is also an option as well. Jeff Gladney, like you, you mentioned, um, actually, and a lot of, uh, I did a lot of research. Um, obviously I watched like hundreds and thousands of hours of, and I did not re- really like mock drafts, but I was like curious, you know, I was like, who are the top 10 available at each position? So when I did that research and I looked at, um, the best defensive backs, uh, Jalen Johnson was not in the top 10 as it was on CBS, at least. So, I don't know. Who watches CBS other uh, than Survivor? Hey, I mean they got some. They got a dope football theme, like an intro theme. <laughs> what CBS has going for them is their announcers. That's as well. true. Yeah, I love Romo. But yes, Jalen Johnson. You're you're big on him. Yeah, I like Jalen Johnson from Utah. Um, my problem with Christian Fulton, he had Derek Stingley on the other side, who's the best cornerback in the nation. He'll be top three pick in two years, if not the top pick. He's the best corner since Patrick Peterson, in my opinion. So I, I just I have questions with Christian Fulton. I'm not I'm not convinced. The final pick. Originally, I had the Chiefs trading up from 32 to 23. Chiefs selecting Jonathan Taylor, and then the Patriots. At number 32, selecting quarterback in Jalen Hurts. But if the Chiefs are staying put at number 32, and that man, Jonathan Taylor, is still on that board, they're picking Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin. So you could probably attest to how good Jonathan Taylor is uh, just because you're a big Wisconsin fan. Uh, but you did mention earlier about the beating that he took because he yeah. did, he was productive in college, but with that came a lot of carries. Right. Um, but I feel like the Chiefs, Damian Williams is not the answer. And Damian Williams excels best if he has another running back to feed off of. Um, not saying that he's not talented, but I'm just saying that he's not a workhorse back. So if you throw in Jonathan Taylor in there with Damian Williams and you give Jonathan Taylor that rest – that he needs because of the workload that he had in college. I feel like this would be a good pick. The second best um, or the second running back taken in this uh, first round. Some people would say he's the best running back. Jonathan Taylor is going to be the next Kansas City Chief. I love Jonathan Taylor, um, but I just don't think he fits the Kansas City offense. Uh, I think I think someone who would kind of benefit from that offense would probably be either J.K. Dobbins or Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Uh, Clyde kind of reminds me a little bit of Kareem Hunt a little bit, 
very versatile guy. Um, can catch the ball at the backfield. So I think I think if Clyde Edwards Alaire is there, or maybe they even move back and take him early in the second round, I think they do that. Um, I think Jonathan Taylor kind of fits more of like a, a Baltimore Ravens kind of style offense. And I mean, he does have a beating, but I mean, that guy is so good. Everyone had questions regarding his top end speed. And I think he's proven that. I mean, he ran track for Wisconsin, and no one's just going to go run track division one and compete and you know like do well and i think i mean that really helped him like with his long distance speed and if you watch his film he outruns everyone so uh, i i hate that question of he doesn't have that top end speed he has the vision he has the power he has the cutting ability his vision is unreal and of course you know he does have a very good line at wisconsin but not many people get two thousand yards every single year of their yeah. career in college, and That's he's insane. gonna go down as probably top five running back in history of college football. Yeah, as very, of today, very good running back. Uh, so to wrap this up, um, I mean, I'll just give like a couple players or a few players that I feel like were maybe snubbed in the first round. Uh, you mentioned J.K. Dobbins is one. Cole Komet has the possibility of going in the first round. The yeah. tight end, Josh Jones an offensive lineman. Um, we've got the edge, or not the edge rusher, defensive lineman, Ross Blacklock from TCU. I had him in the first round. And then also uh, Xavier McKinney, the safety. We talked about him a lot. And then Christian Fulton, which you have your um, you know, concerns about. But then Grant Delpit from LSU as well. Yeah. Um, who are like a few players that you feel like are, are snubbed in this first round mock draft? In the first round, um I would definitely say Xavier McKinney, Grant Delpit, those are both starting safeties, both ball hawks, and I think they're they're top tier safeties. Um, so those two, we mentioned the running backs. Um, Josh Jones is interesting. Houston offensive tackle. I think maybe his competition in Houston maybe is keeping him from that first round but he very well could go in the first round I, I i don't doubt it i wouldn't be surprised um there's someone i like um he's not a first round talent um mock drafts i've seen are like late late four um but defensive end from florida is uh jabari zuniga Ooh. and he is just a freak man he's huge massive guy so strong and when he's healthy he's getting after the quarterback so i think if teams looking for a pass rush they can get him uh pretty late but i wouldn't be surprised if some teams uh take him late second early third if if i'm miami the or the raiders i'm calling and i'm asking about deshaun watson Wow. I'm asking about Deshaun Watson, and I think that the Texans would be open to it. I think the Texans could look at next year's draft. I mean, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, maybe they're like, okay, I mean, we can get some assets here and, you know, move Deshaun on, which would be wild, and I don't think it will happen because yeah. Deshaun is the man. Um, but DeAndre Hopkins was the man, and I don't see how you trade Hopkins. So I think anything's possible there. That's crazy. Um, this is great. It was awesome. This is wonderful. Thanks for for being on. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's nice to talk some sports when there are no sports going on. And I'm glad we got the draft coming up to look forward to. And for, seriously, thank you for having me on. I, I love talking sports. I love talking football. And th this has been great. And I'll, it'll be interesting to see how our how our draft lines up to the actual draft. Maybe we'll get three right. Maybe we'll get 10 15 right we'll see man i mean last year i did a mock draft i think i got uh like one four three or four which is i mean impressive it's, it's impressive it's, out of 32 i mean that's i mean yeah it's whatever <laughs> by the way we're, we're keeping six feet apart the camera may not show it but this is six feet yeah you can tell yeah I, oh wow I can't i'm even a little reach shorter so yeah, i can't even reach him uh but uh Again, this is Michael Watson joining us on the Time to Football podcast. And if you are listening to this on iTunes, know that we have a whole YouTube channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there. We release a lot of videos on there and vice versa. If you're watching this on YouTube, go to iTunes on the podcast app. Just search Time to Football. That's with the number two, all one word. 
and uh, subscribe to us on there. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. This guy's one of the hardest working guys around. So, <laughs> you know, this is the guy right here. You'll see, you'll see him on TV one day. Mark my words. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this NFL Mock Draft. And we will tune in with you next time. 